Hey guys, yeah, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this is just a test live stream to see how my internet handles this. If things go well, I'll just continue doing this uh, maybe on a daily basis or twice a week, depending on how things go. Hello, Tony. What's up? I'm going to be testing doing this. I'm uh, trying to model this and uh, just see how we can approach creating such cups here. So. I'm really not sure how my internet is going to handle this, but uh, yeah, let's see how things go. Just looking at my uh, data here and my internet speed here just to see if it handles everything correctly oh well uh, then i can continue but uh, where's my music okay i guess we can begin so let's start with uh this here just reduce my and just make sure it's my audio is coming through Okay, thanks for Tony. Uh, you're saying uh, it seems good so far. So yeah, let's begin. Let me just reduce my sound a bit here. Okay, so let's start by working on this here because I think it's the most complicated uh, cup among these. So let's see how we can approach it here, going on here. And I think the best way we can approach that is uh, by adding a cylinder. By starting with uh, this here, this, I don't know how to call it, but uh, if we start out with this, we can easily extend it to uh, the rest of the cup. So I'm just adding a cylinder so that we can use that as a Boolean cutout, as a Boolean object to cut out this part here. So I'm just going to scale this in the X and Y axis by locking the Z axis. So I used Shift S, sorry, S and then Shift Z to lock the Z axis. Have something like this and then Control A to apply the scale. Uh, then I can go to the build into edit mode, select the top loop and then the bottom loop. What I'm trying to do is create a Boolean object uh, that can cut out uh, this piece uh, from this cup. So Ctrl B to bevel those edges. Let me just go to front view here so that I can see it very easily. Let me pause this music because I don't trust how my audio is coming out. Okay, so I can use Ctrl B get a shape that looks like that and uh, now if I move this away from the center and uh, with my cursor still in the middle there I can use shift a to add an empty and uh, then use that empty as a mirror object uh, for this object here so if I select this whatever this is may I'll just call it a peel and add a mirror modifier and select this empty Let me just add a tiny bit of music if I select this here now I can rotate this empty since it's our mirror object by 45 degrees to duplicate this on this side. Now I also want it to be duplicated on this other side so I can turn on the mirror Y axis. If there are any issues, please let me know and I can see what I can do better. Yeah, so we have this. Now these are going to act as our Boolean objects to cut out uh, these parts here. So now I can rotate these on the X axis so that they give us a slight tilt in here and I can maybe even extend them out a bit now if I add a plane right there scale it down maybe so that is in the middle of uh, that like that and I uh, can extrude it up just a bit maybe scale it out a bit so that we get that cone shape of our cylinder for our cup I can also put this up a bit actually they should be somewhere like that I think they need to be taller so let me just go into edit mode and uh, select this side 
move them up a bit uh, somewhere like that and I can extend this up like that and just bring this closer go to render and uh, just make this more interesting let me give it some material like that and uh, now we can add our boolean and select our cylinder to be our boolean now let me just uh, turn off this uh, so that it's not displayed we just have it as a wireframe you can see now we are getting that shape now if you look at the top here is it possible to do this without a boolean david conrad yes yeah it is possible but uh, it would take a lot of time uh, to to do it and i think billions are easier to work with uh, than uh, just doing it by manually abdul abdulak i uh, hope i'm not butchering your name you're saying uh, uh you want to hire me ah i like money so we can talk about that but uh, yeah so um this is what we have i think it, we we can push this out a bit so that this is not too deep inside so just push this and I, you see because we're using a uh, mirror modifier i just need to push one and uh, the rest of the can go out as well i think we can also scale this on the x-axis just a bit actually let's not do that let's try scaling this on the local y-axis so if you want to scale this on the local y-axis you need to scale this on you need to hit s and then the axis twice so if I just hit S, Y, I'm scaling this on the global axis. But if I scale this on S, Y, and then Y, I'm scaling it on the global Y, sorry, local Y axis. And that's what I want to do. So I'm just also going to extend this a bit, just like that. Now I can go to this, and select these egg loops. What I can do, I can add a loop here and a loop here like using modifiers a lot because uh, they simplify work a lot you can delete those, those other sides and then use a mirror for those other sides just make sure this is above the boolean now if i add if i bevel this ctrl b so that i can carve it out make it like a curve just like that let me shade smooth and maybe turn on auto smooth Yannick Petit, hello, what graphics card do you have? I have a, a GTX 750. It's not that powerful, but uh, it does what it does. Sometimes I have to abandon projects because my computer can't handle them. Uh, yeah, but uh, you gotta have, you, you, you just have to use what you got sometimes. So this is what we have so far. And I think, let's see. So you can see this here is a bit smaller. I think what we can do is uh, just scale this up a bit, maybe scale it up on the X and Y axis, local X and Y axis, just like that. And now we have something like this. And also scale this again, something like that. Great. Uh, I'm tempted to apply the Boolean now because I think this looks good enough. So let's do that. So I'm just going to duplicate this as a backup shift d move it to the other side just to have it as a backup and now i can apply first the mirror modifier and then the boolean modifier now i don't need this and uh, since i already have a backup here yeah, i'm not worried about applying the mirror the modifiers model pc motherboard as eh? model pc motherboard as fast as you can yeah you can't model a, a motherboard as fast that fast uh, it would take a few hours if not days if you want to be very detailed uh, anyway yeah let's bring back the mirror modifier because we have a lot of symmetry here there is no need to model everything so i'm just going to delete these parts these other sides and uh, let me select this side as well, delete those vertices. So we have this. Now, 
booleans tend to create a few polygon uh, few geometry issues but uh, i won't worry about those uh, right now let's first model the entire thing and then we can uh, yeah so let me add back the mirror modifier Let's see what we have now let's work on this round thing and this uh, rounded thing so what we can do here is uh, just go to edit mode and make sure you have your cursor still in the center then add uh, the circle you can extend it just a bit then push it up like that uh, we don't need this middle face so i'll just delete that have something like this grant is here you're kidding if he is yeah i love that guy very awesome guy uh <laughs> no you can't do it in under 10 minutes especially if you're doing a tutorial about it so it would be very very hard okay so we need to make this wave pattern and uh, before we do that let's just select this extrude it up and uh, hide everything just select everything uh select everything using uh, i think a and then deselect this bottom line and then hide uh, the selected now we want to create this wave pattern so i can select uh, this vertex here and now you can see it's on the corner so i can just turn on proportional editing then drag this i need to change my fall off to see what would work best so let's try this smooth push it down until we get that wave pattern like that now when you use proportional editing with other parts with other parts of the mesh hidden those parts will not be hit, will not be affected by the proportional editing grand main you inspired me to do this thank you for being here really appreciate it uh, i'm just trying out your stuff and see uh, anyway uh yeah i'm even forgetting what i was doing but uh, because i'm so excited to see you guys here uh, anyway um let me just shed some mouth here you can see now we get that pattern as i was saying that uh, if you hide parts of the mesh and uh, use uh, the oh, the uh, the i'm not forgetting how this is called uh, this uh, proportional editing uh, the hidden vertices will not be affected or the hidden polygons will not be affected by uh, by that uh, uh, fall off so that's why you see that uh, when i hid everything and i started moving this uh, the rest of the polygons are stayed in their position so let me just unhide this bring it back to where i want and uh, you can see what we have now what we are left with is to connect these polygons are uh, this edge here this edge loop nice grand habit nice work looking good i can't stick around yeah it's okay man i, I really appreciate you being here i uh, said good yes it's motivating uh, to see the support thank you uh so i will just need to connect this uh these edge loops are uh, to this edge loop here so i can select this edge loop using alt and then right click left click uh, to select that edge loop i can also select this using out left click but you need to make sure you, you are holding down shift and then out and you should click that but uh, if you have an end goal around uh, the edge loop will not select uh, the selection will not be entirely full so you need to you can use control select to select an edge loop like that where you have an end goal so let's also select this and then you can use the shortcut you can right click and uh, find the bridge edge loop uh, tool so to bridge them like that and uh, we have something like that but uh, the shape you're having here we are losing that we are we, we you can see we are starting to lose uh, that uh this wave here so what we can do is add another loop here extend it until it overlaps or aligns with uh the old with the last edge loop that was there now we can select these uh, these faces here go to top mode make sure your cursor is in the middle then move your 3d point uh 3d cursor i think it's your pivot point sorry uh, to the 3d cursor by pressing your a uh, period key so 3d cursor and then scaling this on uh from the pivot point uh, also while locking your z axis so s shift z to do that and let me just 
also make sure you get, you don't have proportional editing turned on so s shift z you can see we have something like that okay now i think i've pushed it out i pushed it out too much so let me just scale it back and the reason i'm, I'm locking the z axis is because if i don't lock it to scale up like that and I don't want that so I'm locking it by using S shift Z to lock uh, the Z axis like that so something like that now I need this to to blend in a bit so I'm just going to bevel this as okay I think I think we have some uh, no more issues so if you select everything you need to you can and then use shift N you can recalculate the normals to fix the issue now we can uh, just select that edge loop bevel that to have something like this now if we add a subdivision surface control 2 you can see we start getting uh, the shape but uh, we need supporting edge loops in different areas uh, to maintain or to retain uh, the shape we have so let's first disable this and uh, can just select these edges subdivide that and then drag those edges down like that and, uh, we still have a few here that we need to, to push down instead of just pushing down using if you hit G twice you can uh, you can move an edge along a vertex along uh, the its edge so, but uh, I don't I'm not going I'm just going to dissolve this uh, so that I don't have to go through that I'm just going to instead of doing that I'm just going to select this and this and then hit J to connect them directly like that now I can select these edge loops and then hit ctrl X to dissolve them so that I don't have to deal with them now maybe I can just merge this alt M merge center to have something like that you can see now we also need to f uh, to add a supporting edge loop here but uh, the problem is our topology here is not really flowing very nicely so what i'm going to do is uh, start removing some of those so fixing some of those polygons sorry it's raining here i'm not sure how my sound is coming coming out uh, so I might have to end this soon but uh, let's end it with uh, fixing some of these issues so and uh, we have a lot of polygons here that we don't need now that's that's also just going to add on uh, the amount of work we are doing so if I remove every uh, second uh, edge loop like that control X you can see it doesn't change other shape that much and since we are going to add subdivision surface, it will still round off uh, the the edges. Sorry, the surface nicely. And, uh, so you now we have this nice edge loop here. We can use that as a support edge loop. If we add another loop here, we can connect this with this. And, uh, now, if I dissolve this, you can see we have. Uh, this coming here i want this to extend right away right up to here so i can just use a knife tool to cut that like that so that it extends all the way like that and uh, it will be a nice support loop for this shape so i can now go in and start removing these extra edge loops all that we what that we don't need and uh, i can also extend this to this like that and uh, just have that connected like that and then like that and I think we can also do away with this egg loop here and extend this just a bit like that you can see we have removed quite a number of edge loops and uh, if you compare this side uh, to this side, you can see uh, the difference. Uh, there is no big difference between. Let me just do this here. 
can see this side uh, compared to this side there is no big difference in how the shape loops looks but uh, there are more polygons here uh, than here so instead of doing the same this side what I'm going to do is uh, again use the mirror modifier to handle uh, this side so let me first turn off or remove this now what I can do add another empty I can add another empty here and uh, let me also first remove this and uh, add uh, the mirror modifier again then select this empty to be uh, my mirror my mirror object now if I rotate this you can start seeing you can see that the mirror is rotating now what I want to do is rotate this in such a way that uh, this side ends up being this side as well so and uh, I think we need to rotate this by let me see uh, you can see from oh, yeah, you can see from here how many degrees we, we can uh, we need to rotate this so if I use R and then control I can snap rotate so I think 125 would work let me see you can also turn on uh, the bisect tool to see better to see uh, this being kind of dissolved or clipped into the mesh so we just need to rotate this yeah, I think around this uh, so that this side is uh, this side and now make sure that there are no overlaps now if we apply this mirror we actually don't need even to hop. we don't need to apply that just yet we can just add another mirror modifier and this time now working on this side means we are working on all the other sides so if I pull an edge here you can see that uh, all the other faces are affecting out very nicely so I'm just going to end it end this here uh, because I think we already have looked at the most it uh, it would be better to to approach uh, to work on the bottom here after I apply uh, the mirror so so that you just have to pull one face and save and then extrude down and uh, have something like this Tony I didn't know you can use mirror you can use two mirrors <laughs> David Conrad yeah <laughs> it's relaxing but I'm not sure if my sound is coming out uh, nicely so that's why I'm but, uh, anyways Let's see what else can I cover before I close out this uh, this can be we can just use bump maps here instead of uh, modeling this but uh, if you wanted to uh, use a mesh instead of bump maps let me just show you how you can uh, work on this here so if we add a plane let's see there are one two three four five about 15 of these if you didn't want to use bump maps but uh, I recommend using bump maps because that uh, David Conrad your voice is clear ah thank you uh, I didn't I thought my uh, the rain was uh, kind of being too loud but uh, if you wanted to make this uh, using geometry instead of polygons what you can do is uh, you can just create a mesh a plane like this apply the scale then subdivide this let's see three times uh, so one two three like that now let me just see how many of these one two three four five and we just add random like that now we can create this uh, I don't know how to call it okay just do something like that and now you can add a shrink wrap modifier I haven't tested this out I just have an idea how this would work so if it doesn't really work yeah so if I add a shrink wrap rotate it is 90 degrees and uh, then 90 degrees to face uh, the mesh just make sure to align it correctly now if I add other shrink wrap change this to normal tangent above surface let's scale this down so that it fits into this 
Okay, it seems we need more subdivisions. Doesn't seem to. Okay, just need to force it in, push it in like that. And just move it above the surface like that. So now we have these points and uh, let's see how it's fitting in. Something like that. Now after you, you do that, after it fits into the curve, you can just apply uh, that shrink wrap. I think we can also just use uh, the best mesh here. It would have worked. Actually, let's just use that instead of using the shrink wrap because this is already attached to the mesh. So if I just select this, shift D, and then P to hide it, sorry, to separate it into its own object, uh, we can add extra edge loops here. Now we can select these vertices. One, two, three, four. Let me just, let me just select random vertices here. Then bevel those edges. Sorry, what says Control Shift B. Now we we'll get these diamond shapes, but uh, we can change them into circular shapes by changing the profile, like so. Now you can go to face, face select and deselect these middle faces. And then if you hit F, you can turn these into end guns. Now you can select one by one and then use the shortcut shift out s1 to turn them into uh, perfect circles so shift out s and then press one uh, to make them into perfect circles like that like that but again i would recommend using uh bump maps but uh, sometimes bump maps are not enough especially if you're going to create uh close-up shots So my pattern is off, it's not exactly this pattern, but uh, maybe we can just add a few of those. Something like this, so maybe if I add, hmm. okay, this shouldn't have been here, it should have been here. So if I just select this, Control Shift B to bevel this, Hit F again. You need to select one by one and then shift out S, shift out, shift out S1, shift out S1. Now we can select that pattern. So I think it's like this. But the circles are closer. So these edges should have been closer, or you can just uh, hit your period key and uh, select in video origins and scale uh, the face those circles like that. Now you can insert these using I, Alt S to push them out, maybe scale them back a bit and then Control B to bevel those. Now, you see what's happening here? We're not getting the bevel we want because our profile is, uh, we changed our profile, so we need to bring it back so that they're being pushed out like that. And uh, now the work is just to fix uh, these protruding issues, so play with the offset just a bit here. Oh, what I think would be what what I think would work best is that uh, I'm always thinking of other ways to approach this while I'm working. So, but if we count how many vertices these are, so the selected vertices are trail off. Uh, we can just create the shape. So trail off vertices we want outside edit mode like this. Hit F, extrude up, Control B, get the shape we want small thing in. then just lay this bottom face something like that and you can scale them down 
Now what we can do is just, let me see, we can just select, because I want to align others here. We can just select these, these faces, Shift D, P, and I can now just parent these to this Control P. Now select this, go to uh, Object Data, and uh, under instancing we can instance faces just move this now to this position uh, so select this cursor shift s to move the cursor to the selected and then select this selection to cursor using shift s and i can scale this down now we have those pieces in position but i remember we have uh, the plane already let me just okay this is not where's our plane have this plane just scale them up just a bit so that they are closer yeah so something like that and uh, now these are not these are, these are just instances or duplicates that are not real we need to turn them into actual objects so if you use ctrl a use there is an option to apply uh, instances or to make them to make instances real because right now they're just instances that are not real I'm not sure if that makes sense, but uh, if I make instances real, I can turn them into actual objects and then shift uh, J to join them to the active element. Make sure you have an active object selected to join them like that. I don't need this anymore, so I can remove that. Now join this to this, but uh, I want these to align with our circles. So let's just, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So we need to scale uh, these circles. Let me also remove this. Uh, because we are going to join uh, the mesh, the duplicates we have created onto this mesh, this mesh. So we want to make sure that uh, they align correctly. Let me, I can select these edge loops. Let me just join these back. So this, just hide this. So if I join this to this, Ctrl J, now we just need to make sure that uh, we weld uh, these vertices together. And I think, and uh, because uh, these have the same number of polygons, like our circles, circular polygons, number of, uh, I don't know how to call these, but rings, not rings, but uh, yeah, vertices for each of these rings, uh, we can easily bring them uh, to connect, to have them connected to these circles. Uh, actually, let me just select this, Control L, then Control I to select the inverse, then scale these individually. Be remember, we still have our pivot points set to individual uh, origins. So if I scale this down, I can select this edge loop, then this. And uh, if I right click, I can bridge those edge loops like that. Uh, they're not aligned uh, perfectly. So you might need to rotate this. I think we can rotate this along its normal by selecting, by changing the transformation orientation. Just make sure that uh, it's facing the right direction. Uh, it's not actually facing the right direction, but if we select this, uh, we can create a new transformation orientation. Just, I think it's this here. If you hit plus, because we want to rotate the, let me show you what I mean here before I do it. So we want to align uh, these edges to follow, to align these vertices to, to, uh, to align with this. So we need to rotate this, but uh, we need to figure out the right uh, rotation. So what you can do, you can select a face like this and then go to the transformation orientations, click plus to add that orientation. It's not really aligned correctly. This. I'm not sure why it's not aligning. It should align. 
with this face but for some reason it's not hmm. I'm not sure why it's not really let me see if I change this to uh, if you hit comma you can access this a uh, transformation orientation so if I change this to local This is what I'm talking about. Something like yeah. So we want the we want to rotate this along along that axis. So just need to rotate this on the z axis like that. Now we can go on and start doing the same for all the uh, for the rest of uh, the what's it the rest the rest of the circles. So just do this. I wish I could fast forward this, but uh, yeah, that's the issue with live streams you can't really have to do everything in real time so this shouldn't be face let's try no more yeah so no more works fine so we are applying like that need to do this here as well bridge basically I don't have to do all the because there are too many and I don't want to waste a lot of your time so let me just you, you get the idea so if we add a subdivision surface here you can see that uh, yeah you get uh, the shapes here uh, you can work on your shape to be better than mine here because mine is a bit flat here so if you created better shapes you could create you could really get uh, this detail now what is left is to match this uh, to this mesh let me first turn off uh, my subdivision surface and that because this mesh here was duplicated from uh, this original mesh, we just have to okay, delete the parts we want to replace on the original mesh and hide. Now, these vertices should still be aligned in the same position as, as the original point. So if I can just, if I just doing this to this, control J, see, this is still separate from the rest of the mesh but uh, we have joined it together we can now weld uh, the overlapping vertices by distance and uh, we should have a solid single mesh again I'm, I don't I don't want to go through all this uh, uh, joining each of these because it will take a lot of time and uh, I think this was enough to show you the idea so if we add a subdivision surface to this and see we are getting uh, that shape so sometimes you might have to come in and uh, try to fix some of these issues uh, that are causing by the large endgons we have here so you can see we have some kind of stretching going on here and that's because we have a really large endgon here so you might want to come in start fixing your polygon flow again as I said this would only be necessary if you are going to create, if you're going for uh, close-up shots of uh, the caps. But uh, if you're not doing close-ups, you might, you can get away easily with uh, just using bump maps. So this is what we have. This button. Okay, and uh, you just need supporting loops. Fix a few end guns here and there. And uh, ah, okay, so, yeah, the problem is I added this mesh on the wrong side that we didn't work on, that we didn't reduce. Okay, I had reduced the number of polygons here, but uh, let me just do that again. So, do this here. So the rest of the work is just cleaning up and make sure that, making sure that this is duplicated on all the other sides. And uh, again, just to show you how I did that, let me first remove this empty. You just need to work on one side like this, and uh, you can use symmetry to, to work on the other side. So you can just delete this side, and uh, 
also delete this site. But so we're going to run an, into an issue here because some of these don't have, uh, this symmetry line doesn't continue all the way here. So you need to come in and uh, make sure it continues for every object you have here. So some of these loops, you, you would have to add in a loop or just rotate this so that uh, that vertex, that edge loop aligns with this with the line of symmetry. Uh, you don't need we don't need this circle here, so I can just merge it into center. And uh, again, this would have to be rotated so that you have symmetry continue continuing all the way. If you don't want to delete that circle, you just control you just select that vertex and that vertex, and then hit J to join that. Again. Just trying to get this very f do this very fast, so I'm just going to not do everything. So if you have a continuous line of symmetry, then you can delete the other side. Make sure that uh, you have selected all the faces, all vertices that need to be selected. Now you can see I didn't select, uh, I didn't add a symmetry here. But uh, that's okay since we're just working with this as an example. You can also come in and just do it, add that later and then delete uh, this side. Let me change this back to default and then this is this to global. Uh, you can see now this is what we have. We also want this to be duplicated on this side so that we don't have to work on this side. So I'm just also going to select this, delete that delete that and delete that so we have this single piece now we can use this piece to create all the other side and you can see on this example original uh, version uh, actually this is the same side as this side but uh, this there is a different word it's not the same design here but uh, let me just for the sake of this, uh, this example let me just show you how to duplicate this all the way here so let's just use the mirror modifier again we need an empty or another object to control the rotation of the, our mirror. So select this, the first room of the subdivision. Select our empty. Now you can now rotate the empty until that joins with that. And you can see from here how it's joining that. And uh, to get incremental rotations, you can use, you can hold on control and then rotate. So R, control, then we have that snap rotation. Then we get that. Uh, we, we still have a few issues here. Uh, this, we are going outside this the line of symmetry, but that's okay. You can just always come in, make sure you have turning, clipping turned on and uh, move them so that they can join uh, to, yeah, something like that. Now, now we have that, since we have that, we just need another mirror modifier. We also need to rotate this so we can add another empty. I'll just use a cube here. Shape. And, uh, David Conrad. It's very helpful. Hope you upload the live. Yeah, I will. I'll be uploading the live, the live stream. Uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, let's select this second empty as our mirror object and uh, rotate it 45 degrees. Now uh, you can see now we have that, these two sides done. And uh, for the other side, we just have to turn on Y. Now we are done. The shape is a bit rough because I'm doing this under, I don't know, 45 minutes now. Uh, you would need a little bit more time to work on this to fix a few issues. But uh, basically that's the concept. And uh, the rest of the cup is uh, very, very easy. I think it's the same idea for this. But, uh, the shape is a bit different. It's not that different. Uh, these are the only difficult parts here. Let me just show you how you can approach that. So if I add a circle, uh, let's use 32. Extrude this, maybe scale it up. that shape we just need one piece like this we just only need to work on one piece like this so if I select let's see this here 
we might actually need more resolution than we added. So I select inverse. Let me just select this side here. Select inverse, delete those vertices. Now let's see if I, how do we create this shape? So if I add a loop here, you know what? I think we need more resolution than I added. So let's double the resolution or the number of vertices to something like times two, which is 64. And uh, scale down, extrude, scale up, add a loop. Bevel that loop. Maybe it should be down a bit here. I won't care too much about the shape, but uh, yeah, so we need something like this. Let me just use these vertices that are facing directly. So if we select these, let me, also, let me select this side here. Control I to inverse the selection, delete those vertices. We have this shape now. Now we need to create uh, this here. So just add a supporting loop. I think we can, can we cut it out? I haven't tested this out, but uh, let me just show you uh, the concept. So if we do this, maybe add a loop there. Scale this out. Make sure the pivot point is set to medium. Maybe just a bit like that. And I think now we can select. You can always come back to this shape and uh, try fixing it if it doesn't look exactly as we want. Just want to show you. Uh, the idea behind uh, that you could use. And I think this here, we would have to extend it out. So I'm using Alt S to push it out again like that. Uh, this is supposed to be in a V shape. So you can push this down and then this down like that. Now we can turn on auto smooth, maybe change uh, the angle, something like 45. Uh, let's try 52. Or we can just set uh, the angle, the the sharpness using Control E, mark sharp, and uh, there is a sharpness uh, mask. So let me find that. Sorry, a sharpness modifier, which is under. Generate, generate, generate. Okay, I can't find it here. Smooth. No. Is it a modifier? I'm not. I'm, I don't. I'm not remembering if it's a modifier or not a modifier. I think we just need to turn on auto smooth. Oh, actually, it's, I think it's edge split. So I'm sorry, I'm forgetting uh, the right modifier here. But uh, you know what? That's okay. We can just use uh, the bevel modifier instead, and uh, just use weight uh, for that. So if I select, I just select everything and just clear this uh, sharpness. Mic volume is slow, silent wraith. Huh. I don't think so, but uh, maybe it's, your, it's on your side because I, I've maxed out my volume. Just see. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so let's select this egg loop. Just give it a weight. 
bevel weight. You can see now we are adding that bevel. You can see. Also, we want that bevel on the inside loop like that. Now, if we add a subdivision surface, I'm using Control to add uh, that. You can see. I think we need also this to be a bit sharp. So Control E. Bevel weight. Move this, maybe this also. Control E, bevel weight. Uh, you can see how the shape is coming out. And uh, let's see. Now, after you do that, you can just use. Let me make copies here because there are several ways you can handle this. Uh, so, if we do this, we can add. Where is it? We can use the spin the spin tool. Let me make sure I'm saving this because sometimes Blender crashes when you use uh, the spin tool. I'm not sure if that bug has been fixes fixed it. Sorry, fixed. So let me just be safe. And you can see you just need to use the spin tool and just play with the angle here. So if we use 360, I'll uh, make sure instead of use you make sure you check this use duplicates so that you have that you have duplicates instead of connected pieces but uh, you need to play around with the number of steps here until you see that this gap is fixed there is no gap here or there is no overlap uh, with the mesh so i think we just need to uh, just use undo so let me just try this again 360 Then I was hung. I think it's because I had more too many steps. Let's undo this. Okay. Ah, okay. I think I have a lot of steps here. Yeah. And yeah, that's the issue. I changed the uh, the steps to three hundred and sixty instead of uh, the angle. That's why it's. It's uh, hanging there because I'm using a lot of steps here. So let me just change that one. Again, use duplicates. And uh, let me change this to 360. Then we can play around with uh, the steps. Let me bring back my music. I just have to play with the steps until you don't have any overlap. Uh, the problem with working like this is that uh, if you apply uh, the spin, the spin tool, you don't, you, you have no way of controlling uh, the effects anymore. You don't, you can't uh, change uh, the results anymore. Uh, so. There's a, there are different ways you can handle this again. Uh, if we add a circle like this, maybe let's try 10 like that. We can parent this to this object. Actually, this might not work. We're thinking of a different tool. So we can use also the array modifier uh, to duplicate this around. But uh, the spin modifier, the spin tool is better to. to uh, it's better to use the spin, the spin tool, except that uh, after you apply the changes, uh, you lose that uh, workflow. You can't go back and change uh, the number of steps or uh, the angle. Ah, okay. Let me just... Okay. Uh... So we can use the array. Uh, to make uh, the duplicates around so if i add an empty yes i uh, make sure you don't scale it down and uh, then you add the array modifier select the empty make sure you have this as object uh, check object offset and then select the empty then if you rotate this i uh, make sure you apply the scale of the object and also the scale of the uh, array 
sorry, the empty, so that you don't have any scaling issues in your modifier. They annotate this. Move this offset. Rotate this. And make sure you remove uh, the relative offset so that there is no value here, otherwise you're going to get a few issues. So now you can rotate this a few times. You can rotate this until you see that uh, there is no overlapping and uh, the vertices are aligned like that. And uh, you can also select the mesh and turn on merge uh, the vertices so that they merge the vertices uh, that are uh, overlapping if you have any. Now you can uh, add your, uh, you can add uh, the count, you can increase the count uh, to make sure that this goes around like that. You can see we, we have uh, the shape we want. And, uh, now bringing this closer actually doesn't do what I expected, what I, I was expecting it to do, but uh, that is okay. I will still have some overlapping issues here, so you need to rotate this as you're watching these vertices. But uh, sometimes you're going to have to go back to the original mesh and uh, try to remove the overlap from there. But, uh, I think I still have a few issues here. Just have to come in like that. Or you can just increase. Make sure you check first last so that you get that you get rid of that seam. And uh, I think we have another issue here. Just increase uh, the offset distance to get rid of that. And now uh, we have uh, the cup, at least the concept of how you can create that cup. Now we also have this pointy stuff coming out. Silent Wraith. Sorry I'm if I'm butchering your name, but uh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm sorry for the music. I didn't know it was uh, getting over my, my voice but uh, so now to do these pointy things uh, we already have this duplicate that's why I also chose to use the array modifier instead of using uh, this spin tool and uh, the reason for that again is that uh, yes if we use the spin tool I guess use 360 make sure this are duplicates after you confirm the shape after you tab out of edit mode or after this, this panel uh, goes away, you can't go back and change anything. So for example, if we have, you see we have these overlapping vertices. Now we don't, there's no way for us to fix that without going in to each of these duplicates and fix, fixing them manually. You can see, you can see those lines there. And uh, say we want to add this here. Now we, we have no way of adding that shape to all of those duplicates. So you can see if I duplicate one, du edit one piece, it doesn't change uh, for the rest of the pieces. But uh, using the array modifier here, I just have to work on one. For example, if I pull this vertex, let me just, um, this, you can see that uh, all of them now have uh, that. Let me just undo that for a second. Now let's work on this. Uh, since we have, let's just move our, our cursor to the center, Shift S, cursor selected, so that is there. Now select the outside loop. If that menu goes, press F9. Hmm. Let's see. I don't think it would work as you expect it to work, so. Let's use the spin tool again. Rotate this duplicate. If it goes like that, press F9. Now I don't think it comes back. I'm just I'm pressing F9 here. But, uh, it doesn't come back. I don't think it can come back. Uh, the only way it would come back is uh, if you don't confirm the results. That's my understanding. So let me see. You're saying if it's minimized, press F9. Yeah, that would work as long as you, have, you haven't confirmed the results. You can see the spin tool is still active and I can change, make changes now. 
uh, because it's still active. But uh, if I moved away without doing anything else, moving or scaling for it, when you click somewhere else, then press. Yeah, I, I understand that because it's just minimized right now. But uh, I'm saying that uh, say you have confirmed the results, say you liked uh, the results as you wanted them, but uh, you you forgot say to add this detail here. There's no way for you to go back to the spin tool, because right? if you press F9, you can't access other settings anymore. If you try using this this tool again, it's just creating a new instance of that uh, workflow. So that's why I'm preferring uh, the array modifier. So if I wanted to fix anything here, I can always come back here and uh, just, you can even disable it and just see the one piece, make changes to it and uh, yeah. So let's see how we can add this. So these are one pointy tooth uh, for every uh, large one here. So I can just add it directly here. So just select that edge loop, make sure you cursor is set to the middle, then extrude, S, shift Z to scale this uh, towards the center. Uh, make sure you change the pivot point to, to, cursor, to cursor by pressing your period key, S, shift Z to lock the Z axis. So we have something like that. Now remember we have a bevel setting, so I can add, give this a bevel weight, control E. Let me switch to the move tool because this Spin tool is uh, everywhere. I don't, I don't like seeing it. So, Control E, bevel weight, something like that. And I think we are good. And add another loop there. And uh, I think it doesn't extend that far. So somewhere around there. Extrude down. Add a bevel for this. Control E. Okay. Control E. Somewhere that okay you can see we have a few is shading issues here now the reason for those is that when we extruded it also extruded these side faces so let's get rid of them now we don't also need this okay now let's add that V shape so it should be on this vertex I think we can just draw it uh, using the knife tool. So if I, let me see, it's going to estimate this shape. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, this is just a tutorial. So you can make yours perfect if you want to, but I uh, just want to make mine simple, as simple as possible. So I'm just going to push this vertex out like that and uh, now I can select these and give them a bevel weight as well bring back the bevel it doesn't look perfect but uh, again this is just a tutorial and uh, we have but you can fix it I think if we added the subdivision surface it should yeah make it look better see we don't have seams we don't have anything and I think we have a few issues here sometimes you might need to rotate uh, those vertices let me just see we have some kind of dents here so rotate this hmm. oh I think that's because we have this subdivision surface above the array so if I push this down you should get rid of those dents. Uh, we have a few issues here, but uh, those can be removed by improving your poly on your geometry. Okay, not like that. I think also changing the shape, because I'm trying to get rid of this kind of stretching here. What are, you, what are the benefits of a clean topology, like having four faces throughout your mesh? Now that depends on what you're going for. Um, for this, uh, since we are not going to deform this, uh, clean topology is nice. Uh, it's actually something you should be uh, working towards too. But uh, 
it's going to depend on what you're going to do with the model. Uh, in my case, I sell 3D models, so I always strive to get clean topology when I can, and uh, because it looks more professional when you're uh, when you're going to share that model with someone else. So, so if you if you are able to do this, to do it, uh, just do it, uh, because. It also fixes a few issues like this here. This is because of the topology we have, the underlying topology we have. It's uh, making the subdivision surface stretch uh, that area. But uh, if we look at uh, the bevel here, if I change, if you change the bevel, uh, the outer meter type, I think to patch, let's see which one would work best. I think it's arc and that would give that would get rid of that uh, subdivision issue. Yeah, you can see now it's better. Now that was just by changing the, the topology uh, to to clean to make it a bit cleaner. And uh, it fixed uh, that. Sometimes you don't even have to do a lot of work to fix your topology, like you saw you saw there. We just changed one setting and uh, it's great. Thank you. Smith. Yeah, so that's it, I think. And uh, where is my other model? Okay. Did we delete? Did I delete it? I'm not sure. I think I did. Uh, so, yeah, in one hour and eight minutes, we are able to do this and this. The other shapes are really, really very, very simple. This is the same as this. This is the same as this. This is just, yeah, very easy. So, I'm not going to do that. Uh, maybe just to finish this off, I can apply the array. Let's turn off these. Then we can just hit F to join that. Maybe scale it out. Uh, make sure that the pivot point is set to median. And uh, extrude, push that in like that. And uh, can give this a bevel as well. Control E, bevel. Control E, bevel, and uh, we are good. Yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next live stream uh, whenever my internet allows. And uh, yeah, thank you for being around. Let me sign out.